Welcome. Welcome, one and all, to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. It is a special... Thank you, Citizen. It's a, it's a very special uh, night here on The Late Show because in just a few minutes, I'll be joined by Vice President Kamala Harris right over there. And what y'all at home don't know is this place is crawling with Secret Service right now. And I want to thank this audience, this live audience right here, for submitting to a thorough but tender cavity search before being seated. All in all, yes. Yes. No, no extra charge. All in all, sort of a slow news day. Uh, not much going on. I mean, unless you want to count the direct contact between U.S. and Russian militaries in the skies over the Black Sea. Uh, Here's what we're told that there's nothing to worry about. Yesterday, a Russian fighter jet collided with a U.S. drone. Even worse, after the collision, the Russian plane didn't even leave a note on the windshield. <laughs> Now, our insurance is going to go up. And, of course, all of our drones are insured by the general. Uh -huh. The drone... Is this true? The drone is called an MQ-9. And it was on a routine flight in international airspace when it was intercepted by two Russian fighter jets who used some unusual tactics. Uh, please explain, Air Force man. Several times before the collision, the Su-27s dumped fuel on and flew in front of the MQ-9 in a reckless and unprofessional manner. Dumped fuel on it? <laughs> Did Russia just pee on our drone? <laughs> They're bullying an inanimate object. Hey, nerd, meet me under the bleachers after school. I'm gonna beat up your bike. <laughs> we haven't seen this kind of hazing on a hunk of metal since the Cuban Missile Wedgie. The U.S. had... There you go. It makes no sense. If you think about it, it makes no sense. The U.S. had to ditch the damaged drone in the Black Sea, and no surprise, Russia offered an alternate description of these events, saying they scrambled fighter jets to identify the drone, then the unmanned U.S. aircraft maneuvered sharply, lost altitude, and hit the water. It was not our fault. A uh, drone ate bad sushi and fell out of sky window <laughs> like meddling journalists. <laughs> National security officials are not buying the Russian story. It won't surprise you that we obviously refute the, the, the Russian denial, and I think anybody, uh, after a year now, Jake, should take everything that the Russians say about what they're doing in and around Ukraine with a huge grain of salt. Yes, a huge grain of salt, or as Russian soldiers call it, lunch. Now, some Republicans uh, were mad, and they thought Biden didn't go far enough, like Lindsey Graham. Well, we should hold him accountable and say that if you ever get near another uh, U.S. set flying in international waters, your airplane would be shot down. What would Ronald Reagan do right now? Well, that's easy. He would take Russia down by funneling crack into their neighborhoods. <laughs> Educate yourself to that reality. Educate yourself. To that reality. Now, not everyone's rooting for America's robot in this dust-up. For instance, the former president has always been a huge Putin fanboy. In fact, last week, he blurted out a peace plan that would hand Russia chunks of Ukraine. Well, that is leadership in a time of crisis. It... No, no, no. It, it, it reminds me of Winston Churchill during the Battle of Britain. We shall give them chunks of the beaches. We shall give them chunks of the landing grounds. We will surrender. You know, Adolf's a member of my golf club. But most other Republicans have backed Ukraine, until now, at least. Enter Florida governor and threatened cat, Ron DeSantis. <laughs> Monday night, uh, Governor DeSantis released this statement. While the U.S. has many vital national interests, becoming further entangled in a territorial dispute between Ukraine and Russia is not one of them. So... You're saying the invasion of a sovereign country and the destruction of entire cities and the shelling of nuclear reactors and the attacking of civilian targets is a territorial dispute. You were a history major at Yale. Was that the university or the lock company? Because <laughs> that's clearly... I don't know. <laughs> Because that's clearly giving aid and comfort to Putin, and you can tell because his statement was released on a Russian propaganda program, Tucker Carlson Tonight. 
Clearly, DeSantis is just taking his position to establish his far-right bona fides in his upcoming primary challenge against the former president. And for his part, the former president reportedly wants to go after DeSantis's record as an assistant U.S. attorney, where he plans to accuse DeSantis of being an extremely lenient prosecutor in cases involving child pornography. Well, that escalated quickly. <laughs> it's like that classic roommate fight. You ate my last yogurt. Oh, yeah? Well, you're historically lenient in cases involving child pornography. <laughs> and to, to paint him as something of an insider, the former president is considering a new nickname for DeSantis, Ron Establishment. Okay, that's nowhere near a nickname. <laughs> that just sounds like a fun place for Rons to hang out with other Rons. <laughs> Welcome to Ron Establishment. I'm Ron. Uh, hello, Ron. Ron will be your server. Tonight's special is Ron with the side of Ron. Have a good Ron. Ron, 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 Ron. <laughs> Adieu, Ron, Ron, Ron. Adieu, Ron, Ron. <laughs> One thing that, that might affect the ex-president's campaign uh, is being the target of, and I'm rounding down here, a quintillion court cases. <laughs> One of those is the Manhattan DA's case involving the $130,000 hush money payment the former prez made to porn star Stormy Daniels, which may have been an illegal campaign contribution. And now, prosecutors are signaling that criminal charges for the former president are likely. Okay, okay, okay. I understand. I've been hurt before. <laughs> but I'll take reports of charges likely. It's much better than what I usually read. Justice Hazy, try again later. <laughs> The ex-president maintains his innocence in the hush money scheme, and like all of the most innocent people, he won't testify. So he's keeping quiet. Wait a second. Did he pay himself $130,000? <laughs> but my favorite part of all of this legal drama is that at this point, the ex-president has to shop for new lawyers in the discount attorney bin. <laughs> like the one he's recently been sending out on cable news, Joe Tacopina. Seen here saying, Mr. Luther, Mr. Luther, I can't explain it, but Superman got away again. <laughs> Takapina, Takapina, Takapina went on MSNBC yesterday, and things got a little spicy when host Ari Melber played video from 2018 showing the ex-president clearly lying to reporters about the hush money. Did you know about the That is, that's what you're going to consider a lie. A lie to me is something material under oath in a proceeding. What? Ari, Ari, a lie. A lie doesn't count unless it's in court. That's in the Constitution. Okay, I just lied about that, but we're not in court, so it doesn't count. And since there's no judge here, I'm not the one who clogged the toilet in our men's room. <laughs> then, Takapina. Takapina, Takapina. Hey. Then Takapina did what you should always do when someone brings the receipts, tried to grab the receipts. That's not a lie. That's, That's not a lie? No, here's why it's not a lie. That's not a lie? Here's why it's not a lie. Could you did you know about this? Did you? Did you? Down. Let, me, let me answer. Did you know about this? You, no, I don't. No, we don't need that. He just tried to grab the evidence. <laughs> I'd like to see this guy in court. Judge, 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 shut up for a second. Give me that. Give me that with your bang, 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 bang. <laughs> Enough of that. Give me that, too. Wow. Now, you're not so smart now that you're naked. <laughs> By the way, nice pepperoni nips. <laughs> uh, then he, he made an argument legal scholars call super cuckoo. Here's what, why it's not a lie. Yeah because it was a confidential settlement. So if he acknowledged that, he would be violating the confidential settlement. So is it the truth? Of course it's not the truth. Was he supposed to tell the truth? He would be in violation of the agreement if he told the truth. So, <laughs> if I'm following here, <laughs> you can lie about committing any crime as long as you sign an NDA afterwards. <laughs> Where were you the night of the murders? Look, officer, I can tell you that I was burying those bodies behind the Denny's out by the airport, then hosing the blood out of my Buick LeSabre. And I would if I could, but I signed an NDA. My hands are tied. <laughs> Much like the bodies I buried. 
Turning to the world of science, meteorologists say a giant blob of seaweed is headed to Florida. <laughs> Technically, he just gave a speech in Iowa, but he's heading back to Florida. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. Harry Coon from the new Boston Strangler movie is here, but when we come back, ladies and gentlemen, it's Vice President Kamala Harris.